scoot over to the right a touch, and I think we're ready to go. Welcome back to the Born Handy channel where we take on pretty much anything a handyman might be asked to take on, plus a little extra. This video is possibly right up that handyman alley, and it is a continuation of the do-it-yourself 30 by 40 metal building. If you were following along, then you know that I made a pretty big mistake with the installation. If you weren't following along, now you know that I made a pretty big mistake with the insulation and I didn't put the insulation on in the correct order. But ultimately, uh, I was able to get in touch with the building manufacturer and they put me in touch with a crew that was installing one of their buildings and doing the insulation. So I was able to go by and get some video footage and I'm gonna be able to use that to help you not make the same mistakes that I made. First things first, you are going to need some help. This stuff is heavy and there's gonna be some lifting. It's just not something that you, I guess there's a possibility you could do it on your own, but it's not anything I would ever recommend anybody try. And that's a lot coming from me because I'm oftentimes guilty of trying things on my own where I really should have had some help. Something else you're gonna need is some kind of lift. Now that could be a manual crank lift or it could be maybe a tractor or you might rent a lull. This is definitely not something that you're gonna throw up over your shoulder and go up a ladder with. So go ahead and be prepared to rent or to have on hand some kind of equipment to lift this insulation with. Something else you're gonna need is good weather. Now when I say that, what I mean is you don't wanna be doing this when it's a little windy outside. Uh, just a little bit of wind you could probably get away with. I would say anything more than five miles per hour, for me at least, would be a no-go. Um, this stuff's gonna catch wind, it's gonna be a giant sail. So, you don't want to be fighting against that when you're trying to carry insulation, especially if you're trying to work on a roof. So if I were doing this again today and I had a crew helping me, the first thing that I would do would be go ahead and get the double-sided tape around the, the bottom. So if this would be the footprint of the building, you want to go all the way around the perimeter on the hat channel and then one more layer of hat channel up. So then just a second layer of hat channel up from the floor. You're also gonna to wanna to get the double-sided tape around all your doors and all of your windows. Now, of course, at this point, you wanna be sure and leave the backing paper on the tape to protect the adhesive. You want this stuff to have maximum adhesion to the insulation. And if you've bumped into it with your clothes or maybe your, your arm a few times, especially if you're a little bit sweaty, you might end up sabotaging your own efforts. So just go ahead and leave the paper on the tape for now. Now there's a difference in the tape when it comes to the gable ends of the building. You're going to want tape on every single piece of hat channel on the ends of the building. And I'll explain why you're going to need that a little bit later on. But just as before, be sure and leave the paper on the tape. Okay, so with our building all taped up, now we need to figure out how much insulation we need. So the insulation is going to, if you imagine that you folded it in half, you want it to drape over the building and then drop down to the ground on either side and then stick to the tape down there. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure the length all the way around. So you need 10 feet, so if then this roof section would be 14 feet, then so it'd be 10, 14, 14, and then 10 again, which should give you 20 between the two walls and then 28 for your roof section for a total of 48. So after you've got that measurement made, Next, you're gonna get a roll of this insulation and roll out about 50 feet. So a couple of feet extra and cut that off. You're also gonna to wanna to find your center mark and put a mark. Now this insulation has like a little flap. They actually call it a tab that sticks off. That's a great place to mark. So go ahead and put your center mark there. Then go to the two ends of the insulation. Go ahead and roll both ends of your insulation so that the two halves of the insulation come together with rolls at the center mark. Now, this is where you're gonna need your lift. You're also gonna want a person on the ground on either side of the building if you've got enough people to spare. Get the insulation up onto the lift and up to the ridge of your roof. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the tab of the insulation is facing the inside of the building. What I mean by that is that where, when the next piece of insulation goes, it's gonna to need to go on top of that tab. So you don't want that tab facing the edge of the building that's gonna be sticking off because then you'll have uh, a hard time making a nice joint with your insulation, or you'll have to flip the other pieces all around and you'll have to fight to get the tab underneath the piece that you've just laid. 
Once you get it up there, you're gonna to wanna to slowly let this roll. Don't just let it fall. This stuff is heavy and uh, something like that could cause you to rip the cover on the covered side of the installation and you just don't wanna to have to deal with that. So it would be way better to just let this stuff go nice and slowly. Once it gets to the edge of the roof line, you should have no problem just allowing it to drop from there. So now you've got a piece of insulation marked in the center over your ridge and it is draped over the building and down to the ground. So this is where your ground folks come in. They're gonna come and grab the insulation and pull it tight enough just to pull the wrinkles out of it. Tight is not really even the right word. You just want to pull it until it is flat. You don't want this stuff under a lot of pressure. Over time, that'll just cause the stuff to tear and become damaged later on down the road. At that point, you can peel back enough of the paper off the tape to stick the insulation down and press it into the tape to make sure that it is sticking very, very firmly on both sides. So now all that's left to do for this particular run is to just cut off the excess at the ground level. Okay, so the next part is gonna call for some information that I haven't given you yet. That's okay, that information is gonna come in a subsequent video where I talk about how to put the metal on. For example, things about how to make sure that you're putting your screws in through the metal and hitting hat channel as opposed to just running a screw through metal and hitting nothing. Uh, how to make sure that you've overlapped the metal in such a way that it all lines up as it runs down your roof line. Things of that nature that are just not going to be covered in this video. Having said that, you're going to want to get some metal up on top of this insulation because you need somewhere to stand as you do the next roll. Now depending on how wide your insulation is, you may be able to do you know, two runs of metal. It may only be one. Mileage is going to vary there. For me, I know uh, my building would have allowed me to do two runs of metal if I had done it correctly. <laughs> Ultimately, get enough metal to cover the insulation to give yourself enough of a platform to do the next roll of the exact same way. Once you're finished with that roll of insulation, it's the same thing with the metal. And then this pretty much becomes rinse and repeat all the way to the end of the building. The only exceptions to that being if you were going to have your insulation falling over, for example, a roll up door, the idea of having a line in the middle and having the full length would just be wasteful. You're gonna to wanna to measure your insulation to fit under the door. And the other thing I'll say is that putting up the metal for the walls, it would be an optional step at this point as well. For me, I think it would be best to just leave the walls until you finish the roof and then come down and knock out the walls. So that being said, once we have completed the roof, now we're gonna move on to the gable ends of the building. So on your gables, you, sh you need to tape across all of the hat channel. And the only one that you're gonna peel initially is actually at the top. So with the paper peeled back off of the top piece of hat channel, you're gonna to wanna to have some insulation cut that is tall enough to go over that, okay? So you'll be up on your lift or however you're gonna get up there. <laughs> and you're going to take this bit of insulation and just stick it to the taller hat channel. And then you would of course trim that uh, as you uh, get it stick and you're satisfied that it is straight up and down and that it is firmly secured. And then as you move down, you will peel the paper away from the subsequent pieces of hat channel all the way down to the ground level. Again, making sure that you have the tab of the insulation on the side where the next piece of insulation is going to go and you repeat that process all the way to the end of your building. Now when you've reached this point, if you've got both ends done, now, if you hadn't done so already, is the time to go around and do all of the metal for the walls. Once you have the walls in place, if you did all of this right, you're almost finished. <laughs> you have a building where you maybe need to hang some doors if you haven't done that already. Your windows should already be in. Uh, a little bit of trim work, maybe some corner pieces. Certainly the, the most important, if you do nothing else, I would go ahead on the same day that you do your insulation and do the ridge cap. That would at very least give you a structure capable of keeping things dry. So if this video has helped you in any way, it would be really helpful if you gave me a thumbs up, a like, maybe a subscribe, maybe share this with someone else that you think could benefit from this video. And of course, until next time, this is Jason with Born Handy, and I hope to see you on the next video. Oh, and I almost forgot. So over here in the corner, I have some tools that I will be opening up and kind of giving you a first impressions on, on my other channel. If you don't know, I have another channel where I work on some cars and that channel is called Saving Sally. So if you think you might be interested in seeing how well the Daytona series from Harbor Freight performs, go ahead and check out the Saving Sally channel as well. 
And for real, this time, that's the end of the video.